Today's video is all about trying old wives tales to see if their gender predictions can be accurate and true. If this sounds interesting to you, give it a big thumbs up because it really does support our channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap that bell so you get notified for when we upload every Monday and Thursday and let's get to trying these wives tales. I am so excited to be sitting down and filming another one of these old wives tales gender prediction videos. I did one of these for Phineas when I was pregnant with him and we didn't know his gender at all and collectively it came out with the outcome that he was going to be a boy and he was which is really exciting we love the thrill and mystery of not finding out our bob's agenda but i also love the guessing game of figuring it out and i find collectively watching these old wife tales videos they have some credibility in their outcomes i have watched a whole heap i must say i've gone on a binge <laughs> and i'm excited to see what our outcome is for today so far we have girl girl boy which gives me hope that baby number four could be either gender obviously it's got nothing to do with me and everything to do with my husband after re-watching my old wives tales for phineas i have written down some questions that i answered there i then went and did a whole heap of research for other questions and experiments that you can do for gender prediction obviously these are not scientifically backed up and the best way to find out a gender is honestly to just find out at one of your scans or with those blood tests but this is just a little bit of fun here's question of the day what do you think baby number four's agenda will be will it be a boy will it be a girl comment down below so i put together a list of different wives tales that i will be answering and i will keep the score tally somewhere here on the screen as well for those of you playing at home Okie dokie, the first question is what side do you prefer to sleep on? So they're saying left side means Bobby is a boy and right side they reckon Bobby is a girl. Now for this pregnancy from quite early on I have preferred sleeping on my left side. I find when I sleep on my right side I actually get heartburn which is really strange. But by morning time I am on my stomach. I don't know how I'm still doing it, but I'm loving it and I think baby is loving it, which makes me wonder when baby comes out if they are going to love to be like swaddled really tightly. So stay tuned for that one. But I'm gonna put one score up for baby boy. The next typical old wives tale is morning sickness related. So if you get morning sickness, it's a girl. If you don't get morning sickness, it's a boy. I have had gagging like reaction this entire pregnancy like even today however with the girls I didn't realize how much you needed to snack and feed yourself like dry carbohydrate food as well it's really interesting the more pregnancies you have the more knowledge you gain about your body and how your body reacts in pregnancies and how you can help yourself with morning sickness so have I had morning sickness I'm gonna say yes 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 for morning sickness. I think it's definitely been there, but I've been able to manage it better, being my fifth pregnancy. Now this next question is a new old wives tale that I had never heard before, and it's about your craving for citrus foods. They say if you crave citrus foods, it's a girl, and if you don't crave it, it's a boy. And the funny thing is, when I've been thinking about like, have I been craving citrusy foods? The answer is yes, I have. My favorite things to be eating is like, tzatziki yogurt where I do Greek yogurt with lemon and dill and cucumber. I love lemonade. I've been loving sour um, worms and lollies, especially during my first and start of second trimester to help with my morning sickness. Like I would say yes for citrus. I have been enjoying it, which is another point for girl. Now I find this next old wives tale rather interesting because depending on who you are, will depend on how your body reacts to pregnancy, but it's about pregnancy weight gain. The theory is if you just put weight on in your stomach area, then it's a boy. But if you gain weight in like your arms, your legs, your face, then it's a girl. I can safely say that it's definitely just baby and it's mostly in my core, but I'm trying to think back to my girls and whether I put any extra weight on there. 
I find personally I put more weight on when I start breastfeeding for some random weird reason. So belly only means that we have two points for boy and two points for girl. The next old wives tale is all about your mood. In the first trimester, I would definitely cried a lot over like stupid ads, which is I think a normal thing. However, I think once the pregnancy established itself, my mood has been pretty like chilled and mellow, which they say for mellow is boy and moody is girl. So I'm gonna circle boy. Now the next very widely used gender prediction theory is all about the heartbeat, which is really interesting because I've spoken to my obstetrician about this and she has said that the heart rate is not a good prediction at all because all babies start off with a really fast heartbeat and then they all kind of slow down the more established and mature the pregnancy becomes. So I am going to still answer this, but it was so funny because I looked at my last OBG appointment because Michael isn't able to attend, I record it and the girls love seeing the baby as well. And the heartbeat was this. Bob's heart rate was 141. This is so funny because the old wife's tale says if it's under 140, it's a boy. And if it's over 140, it's a girl. So by one beat per minute, it's a girl. Next question is to do with headaches. If you get headaches throughout your pregnancy, then it's predicting a boy. If you're perfectly fine, it's a girl. I have been getting massive headaches. I say yes, which is another point to boys. Another really common and widely used one is all about your type of craving. So the foods that you crave, if it's salty, they suggest boy. If it's sweet, they suggest it's a girl. I would say my cravings have definitely been savory. I am loving anything carby. And if you've been watching my pregnancy uploads, I am loving Subway. I just can't get enough of it. Pizzas, pastas all of those good things. And even my new year's resolution for this year is to learn to make a sourdough bread, which is definitely not a sweet thing. I eat sweet stuff like yogurt and chocolate because of the heartburn that I'm getting, but it's more out of a necessity, not a craving. So I'm gonna say that I'm craving salty foods, which is another boy. Now the position in where you carry bub is another <laughs> wives tale. Once again, I know I'm overanalyzing this, but I do not have a large torso. Let me show you. So for me personally, I find this old wives tale to be rather interesting because my torso is literally the size of my hand. I carry Bob straight out. I don't really have room for Bobby to be in any different sort of a position. However, yesterday when I was looking at my baby bump, there was a definite divot at the top of my belly and I feel like baby is quite low. I am getting so much like lightning crutch pelvic pain this pregnancy. I don't know if that's medical related because it's my fourth kid and I only had a nine month age gap between bub number three and this baby. So there could be reasons why, but I definitely feel like this baby is sitting lower and it says that if you're carrying low, it's a boy and if you're carrying high, it's a girl. So I'm gonna have to circle boy for this one again. This next one that made me laugh so much because I've never heard of this one as well. And it's all to do with dad's weight gain, which I think is hilarious. So they're saying if dad's weight has stayed the same, it's a boy. And if he's gained weight, it's a girl. And it was rather interesting because this morning as Mick was getting ready for work, I even complimented Michael for the fact that he's looking like he's losing weight. So for that reason, once again, another point is going for baby boy. This one is rather interesting. They're saying that if your skin is clear, it's a boy. If you get acne or pimples or breakouts, whatever you want to call it, it's a girl. A couple of weeks I did get breakouts and mask mandates were in full swing, which is really hard to try and keep your skin clear. However, during second and third trimester, my skin has been rather good, which I'm really happy with. So I'm going to say that that's another point for baby boy. The final question for old lifestyle and the rest of them are all like test related. Is there saying this is the Ramsey method and I've never heard of this one before and it's supposedly really accurate. It's where the fetus is first 
um, implanted in your uterus. So they're saying if it's the left side, it's a boy. And if it's the right side, it's a girl. And that's if you're getting the scan done on the outside. This is what it looked like. So I'm gonna say that this bob definitely implanted on the right side. So that means right side is girl. Now the next ones are the old school prediction, the Mayan one and the Chinese gender prediction charts. I found that the Chinese ones have been accurate for all of my babies. However, sometimes it's hit and miss with friends and family members. So let's have a look at this one. And I like to use an app for this one. On the what to expect when you're expecting website, they have a app where you can plug in all your information and then it brings out Bob's predicted gender. It's a girl. Okay, dokie, let's circle go. Now the Mayan prediction is about your age of when you conceived and the month that you conceived in. For example, we conceived in July, which is the seventh month, and I was 29 years old. Seven is an odd number. 29 is an odd number, which means for this, if you have an odd and an even number, it's a boy, but if it's both odds or both evens, it's a girl. So that's another point for team girl. Okay, we have three tests left and these ones are gonna be interesting. There's one about pupil dilation. So I have to stare at my reflection for a minute and see if my pupils dilate. If they stay the same, it's a girl. If they dilate, it's a boy. Let's have a look. One minute, starting now. I think, if anything, my pupils got smaller. So, I don't know if I would count pupil dilation. That means bigger. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say no on this one. I'm just going to say they say the same. Because the only reason why I know that they changed was because I took a picture at the start and the end. That was a weird one. Okay, this next one oh, is really interesting and I've never done it before. It's the baking soda test. I've pre-measured two tablespoons of baking soda and I've collected a sample. And they're saying if you put the baking soda into the sample, if it fizzes, it's a boy. And if it stays flat, it's a girl. Oh, that is fizzed. Like cappuccino froth frizz. And I have seen people do this test and some people's honestly, it just stays flat. So that's really interesting. Gross, but interesting. Now the final test is the ring test where you get your wedding ring and some people say put it on a string of hair, other people say put it on a piece of string. So when I was doing my hair, I actually found some hair in my scrunchie, so I've just taken that. And they're saying that circular motions means a boy and sideways swinging means it's a girl. So let's test the final one to see what our gender prediction is coming up with collectively. Oh my goodness, that was very much forwards and backwards, which means side to side is a girl. If you guys know the science behind the whole ring test, comment down below because I really love to know it. We have a winner, Team Baby Boy, which is rather interesting because I had the same outcome when I did this for Finn and Finn was a boy. So I'd be rather intrigued to see if collectively these wife tales does accurately predict that we are going to have another son. It's just a little bit of fun. If you guessed correctly at the start of this video, give this video a big thumbs up. It really does support our channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap that bell so you get notified for all of our future content that we upload on Mondays and Thursdays because this parenting gig doesn't come with a rule book. We only have each other. And I'll see you in our next video. Bye.